What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and today at the Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple took off all wraps on their latest OS 10.11, iOS 9, and the new Watch OS 2. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering all of these topics and basically a little overview of this keynote. So to summarize, this latest version of OS 10.11 is gonna work a lot better on your older Macs and a lot better on your newer ones too. It includes a lot of new features, in particular, window management, which is a new feature from Apple that allows you to multiply multitask a lot better, a lot more efficiently, especially if you have a cluttered Mac. Now, this latest version of Mac OS, Apple's trying to increase productivity by means of this split screen multitasking and getting a lot more performance out of your Mac. Metal is making its way to the Mac, which actually changes the way your computer thinks and processes, and it's going to get a whole bunch of more performance out of all Macs. This will be available to the public in a July public beta, and the upgrade will be free in the fall. Now, here's the one we've all been waiting for, iOS 9. With iOS 8, having such good adoption rates, iOS 9 will certainly make everyone want to upgrade, possibly even want to skip the jailbreak. So iOS 9 is going to focus heavily, and I mean heavily on optimization and performance. Now, besides this, there are a ton of new features, including a revolutionized Siri. Siri has received a new look, just as predicted, taken from the Apple Watch. It's a lot smarter thanks to proactivity with the Spotlight Search. Now this can actually go into your third-party applications, and it's deep linked, so you can actually get a search result and go into an app. It includes a lot of suggestions. It's basically gotten a lot smarter, even metric measurements right there in Spotlight Search. What's really cool is proactivity even allows your device to calculate for travel time. Say you've got an event and there's traffic. It'll remind you when you should leave depending on the traffic. Now that's absolutely incredible. Plug in your headphones depending on your location and time. Music will begin playing any certain category of music to the certain event or place where you're at. Basically Spotlight and Siri have deeper integration now, especially with a lot of third-party apps and more integration with stock system apps. Oh, and don't worry, it's absolutely safe. It's even integrated with photos. You can ask Siri to search for photos from a certain time or event, and it'll be able to show you those. And there's a cool timeline slider on the bottom. Apple Pay has received some welcome updates. For one, you can actually add loyalty rewards cards for certain stores, and depending on your location, again, that proactivity, it's gonna bring up a certain card for a certain store, and possibly the best change in iOS 9. Apple has renamed Passbook to Wallet, and Apple has finally included support for Apple Pay in the UK. Notes has received a welcome redesign, both in functionality and looks. Now you can include headers, paragraph, and this being an app I use a lot, that's a very welcome change. Create a to-do list, a checklist, that's a really nice thing. And now you can interact directly with your notes, draw and sketch within the app. No third-party app needed. If you include a link, it will now show up with a preview inside of notes, and that's true for OS 10.11 El Capitan as well. Oh, and remember that really minor tweak I wanted Apple to add in iOS 9? Well, they did it. Lowercase letters now appear lowercase, and when you shift click, they will appear uppercase. Finally, Apple. Apple has caressed maps with their welcome changes as well. Now, in maps, public transit has finally become an option, not for all cities, but a lot in China and here in the United States as well. So, public transit. A really cool feature I liked is that it will actually show you the entrances to save you milliseconds of time that can make the difference between you making your train or not. Maps also has more detailed previews and suggestions for your current location around you for food, travel, basically like TripAdvisor in your maps. Oh, and you can tell if a business supports Apple Pay from within this description as well. And no sight of that augmented reality thing we were looking forward to. There is one new app in iOS 9. It's called News. It reminds me a lot of Flipboard. It's an interactive news application where you can see video, gallery, a lot of animations, and Apple's really proud of this. It makes sense to add this to iOS 9. It's been missing a good news application. So there's going to be a lot of publishers that are signing up for this. And you can get all of your daily dose of news here. And there's thousands of categories to choose from. So this is where iOS 9 falls behind on the iPhone. A lot of the new features, the cool ones, only are on iPads, and that's a shame. So this includes a new quick type keyboard, which allows you to easily interact with text, select it, cut, copy, paste, and there's a new bar only on the iPad keyboard that introduces shortcuts right there along with Swift Key. And if you guys use a Bluetooth keyboard with your iPad, you now have a list of shortcuts that will be brought up when you connect this keyboard. Really nice feature. And just to give you an idea about this new keyboard, you can select text very easily. It's meant for productivity, and it's taken straight from the jailbreak. It was otherwise known as Swipe Selection. Quite shameless of you, Apple, but I'm glad you added it. And this brings us to the best feature, yet biggest disappointment, because it's only available on iPad, and that's split-screen multitasking. And it begins with a larger multitasking pane. You get a full-screen preview. Swiping through apps is now easier, and there's a new slide view. So you can slide from the edge of your screen. It's like the notification menu on OS 10, and you get a quick preview of another app. 
top. Now slide it directly into the middle and you now have true split screen multitasking. You can interact with both at the same time, which is really cool. Sadly, the iPhone gets no love here with slide view being available on these devices and split screen view only available on the iPad Air 2. And there's a new picture in picture video multitasking view. Surprise, surprise. I wonder where Apple thought of this from. Well, Android had it first. But to be honest, Apple did it right. It's very optimized, looks very fluid, and it's going to run very well. So overall, design-wise, feature-wise, there's not much that makes iOS 9 a worthy upgrade until we get to this part. And this is what I'm most excited about. iOS 9 is going to run like a champ on all devices, especially older ones. Apple's really looking into system stabilization and optimization on older devices, and this includes battery life. Welcome change. Thank you so much, Apple. Apple's Metal will now be used in stock system applications, which means better scrolling, better performance, and overall fluidity. Now hold the applause, it gets better. iOS 9 will also improve your battery life, up to an hour for an iPhone 6, other devices unknown at the time. And iOS 9 will go from a minimal 4.6 gigabytes required to just 1.3 gigabytes to install. That is progress. Some new changes for the health app include some water intake, a couple other ones as as well. HomeKit is now supportive of new devices such as shutters for Windows. CarPlay is now wireless, which is cool. And the Swift language has been upgraded to Swift 2, which will allow developers to create a lot of cool new things. iOS 9 for developers will be available today. For public beta, it'll be available in July and the official release in September with the iPhone 6s. Now, the best part about this iOS 9 release is that it's going to support all of the devices that currently support iOS 8. And this is fantastic news because Apple is going to optimize them and make them run a lot better than they do right now. And of course, Apple did launch that long-awaited Apple Music service. So basically what it is, is it's a streaming service with all of your music. It's going to make it the most accessible music streaming service in the world, as well as a global radio station, which will be really nice. It'll have a very personal touch. It's going to be a $9.99 per month streaming service, and it'll be everything you dreamed of in terms of music. Basically, it's a non-region locked music streaming service. Everyone will hear the same thing no matter where you are around the world, and it's an easy way for producers to get in touch with their fans. It'll be an all-in-one inclusive music application, and I cannot wait to try it out. And lastly, Apple Watch OS 2. With custom watch faces, some new ones from Apple, you'll actually be able to use third-party information in your watch faces, so that's a really nice touch. There's a new time travel feature which will allow you to use your digital crown to go back and forward in time to see events and activities you had yesterday or tomorrow or later today, and a new nightstand mode with buttons used for snooze and end alarm. There are now two pages for friends while I'm sitting here not even having one person I know use an Apple Watch. You can now draw in different colors. How great. Now this being a feature I don't see being used often, you can reply to email on the Apple Watch with short messages. Third party applications now have access to your activity monitor. You can now ask Siri to begin a workout. Nobody asked for this, but you can actually share your activity with other people. Basically, that new Apple Pay I talked about is now on the Apple Watch as well. Public transport on the maps is now included on the Apple Watch as well. There are now glances for third-party applications. The new API will allow developers to use many different areas of the Apple Watch that were restricted before, and this will allow native applications. And lastly, HomeKit for the Apple Watch, which will allow you to control your house and all the gadgets inside of it. Now guys, that's just about it. And that's the keynote recap for the Worldwide Developer Conference 2015. We've seen iOS 10.11, El Capitan, we saw iOS 9, and Watch OS 2.0. Let me know what you guys think down below in the description. To be honest, it's a little bit underwhelming, but Apple is making a step in the right direction with all of the system optimization they're doing. That's going to be a fantastic move for all older devices and newer devices to come. If you guys want to install this new operating system early, I'll have a video out for that today. And I'll be covering all of the new changes and features and little things that Apple didn't mention in the video. So stay tuned for all of that, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to check out many of these upcoming videos. Peace.